All right, so in this video, we want to create our auth controller and see how we can use Laravel, Vue.js, and Inertia to create a user. So basically, submit a form. Let's just start by creating our controller. So in our terminal, I'm going to say PHP Artisan make controller and then auth controller. So just like our Laravel videos. Then back to our project, I'm going to create a post route for register form. So we want to go to forward slash register. Then we want to bring in our auth controller. Then we will have a store method or let's call it register. And again, we don't need a name since it would be resolved using this get route. Now let's go to our auth controller and create our register function here. We want to accept the request and let's just die and jump that request and this is all laravel so we don't have any vue.js or inertia at this point so this is our post route and this is our form and we want to tell our form to use this route now in order to use forms with inertia js we have two ways one is using the router which is part of inertia vue.js so we can make html requests using this router object and it's quite easy as you can see in this example if we want to make a post request we just used router post and then the uri and then we would submit whatever we want to submit so let's do this first and then we will talk about how we can properly do it so in our register.view i'm going to import router from inertia view 3 and instead of this console.log we want to use the router that we just imported then we want to specify the method which is post then the uri so for us is register and let's just submit this one and see what we get so i'm going to add some values here and some password and press login so you notice we get our typical die and dump which is part of laravel but we get it in this model so it's not in a different page or we don't have to press back and this is because we are using vue.js and inertia so we have an spa therefore we are getting it in a model so if i click outside it's gone if i click register again it's back now right now we don't have anything in the request because in this router function we are not sending any data if we send form as the second argument here and then add some value again press register now under request we have our parameters and of course you can see it down here too so now we have access to our values from the form so we can handle that using this register function in our laravel backend so all of this is easy and it works but inertia actually has a form helper that makes all of this even easier so we want to use this form helper instead of that router so we need to import it and then use that object to create our variable so let's just import it first and we'll see what it does so instead of this router i want to import use form then instead of reactive i want to say use form so we don't need this reactive anymore so this is the first feature of this it is automatically reactive and down here we don't have access to the router anymore but we can use the form so instead of all of this we can just say form then the method which is post and then the uri so again register now since we are using form here we don't need to pass in the payload this form would automatically grab these values when we submit it so let's submit our form again so i'm going to add some information press register we still get our information so using this use form from inertia.js we can create our reactive data and we can submit that form from the instance or the return of this use form function i don't want to call it hook because this is vue.js but it looks like a react hook so again in our auth controller in the register function we can just go through the normal registration process first we want to validate the fields then register then log in and redirect of course so we want to grab the request object and use the validate function then pass the fields down here let's specify the rules the name is required and there is a maximum value of 255 then we would have our email which is also required and it must be a proper email there is also a max value for this and it is unique from the users table so since the name of our input field is the same as the column in our users table so we don't have to say which column then we want password so again required and confirmed and if the validations pass we want to just see this die and dump now before we do anything i want to include that sleep function again so we see our progress bar before submitting the form all right so if we provide correct data here and press register 
you see the spinner and see the word pass. However, if I change password and press register, we see the spinner because of that sleep function, but we don't see that die and dump because there is an error. And of course, we don't have any indication that we have an error. But if we take a look at view dev tools, so I'm just going to open it here and go to our layout component or basically just our component, which is register. You notice we have an errors object and within that we have the password as the key that says password field confirmation does not match. This is what we want to grab in our view component if there is an error so we have an errors object of this form class so if i open this form object here you notice we have this errors object and under that we have password and then the message so what we want to do here in our register view component we want to create maybe in a small tag or something then the content of this should be the form instance then errors then the name of this input field so we call that name using the variables up here so the same v model goes down here now if this exists we want to show it so ideally we want to wrap this in an v if statement but for now let's just leave it as it is and actually I want to extract this into a component, but I'm just going to paste it here and change these fields to email and password. And of course we don't need for password confirmation. So I'm going to reload the register page, leave it all empty. So press register, we get our error messages. The name is required, the email is required and so on. So let's just add a name here, but some email that is not correct and passwords that don't match. Press register. We get email field must be valid and the password fields do not match. Or we can submit the form and grab the error messages and show it on the screen if there is an error. And we just have to now provide proper information and submit the form and create the user. But before that, you notice in our form, in the register view component, we are not adding the CSRF token. And you know in Laravel, with the blade template, we need to add that CSRF directive otherwise we would get an error and that is because with inertia this csrf protection is automatically implied so we don't have to worry about this token this is being done behind the scenes and also if we inspect our site one more time and go to view dev tools you notice under our form object not only we have the errors but we have a bunch of other functions and properties for example this processing so we can use this to disable the button if the form is processing. So this can be easily done, for example, on the button for our register form, we can bind the disabled attribute to form processing. So if the processing is false, that means the button is active. But if it is true, then we would have a disabled button. And I have disabled styles for our button. So if we press the register, you notice it disables for a second, and then it comes back. We could even have options on our form back to documentation. You can see we can preserve the scroll wherever the user clicks using an options object right after the URI. Or we could say what should happen on a successful submit or if there is an error or if we want to remember a value. Again, back to our website. Right now we have an error, but we are keeping all the values. So for example, I don't think it's a good idea to keep the password. So what we can do here, when we submit the form, we can provide an options object after the URI and say what happens on error. So this would accept the callback function. We could even accept parameters here if you wanted to. And basically we just want to say reset the form. So we have this function available on the form. This function would reset the whole form if there is an error. So for example, if I provide the name and email, but my passwords don't match and press register, after a second, we get the error, but I lost the name and the email as well. So in order to keep that, we could just say reset the password and password confirmation, but keep the other ones. So now if I do it again, add a password and press register, you can see we get the error, but I didn't lose the name and email. So again, we have a lot of options and a lot of flexibility using the use form object or hook or whatever we want to call it from inertia. Now let's actually register the user. So we already know how to do this one. We just want to save these properties inside a variable, then we want to create a user variable and using our user model, which is imported up here, create a user. So this would take an array of the information that our database needs, and that is name, email, and password. This request validate would give us an array of data 
if the validations pass. So we can save it here and then pass it to this create method, which would then give us a proper user that can be used to log them in. So we can use the auth facade, then login, then pass in user again. And at the end, we just want to return a simple redirect. Let's just for now redirect to the home page, but later on we will have dashboard. Hopefully this should work. Let's open our database. And remember, we are using SQLite. So database.sqlite. By the way, I'm using an extension here to see my SQLite database here. And this is the one I'm using. So SQLite 3 editor. And I closed the database by mistake. All right, so now we can go to the users table here. Right now we don't have any user, but we want to create one. So let's create a simple user, 321, 321, press register. It will take a second. So we get an error because I called this one round instead of saying route, sorry about that. But we should have the user. So only this redirect was wrong, but everything else was right. So in our database, now we have one user with that name, email, and of course the password is automatically hashed since we are using Laravel 11. So it is working exactly the way we want. And this is basically how you can submit any form through Inertia. So even if it was React.js, we would also use the same approach. One last thing before we end this video, you notice in our submit method, we are calling this route by its URI. We could actually use the route helper function and just pass the name. And we can use this one here because in our app.js in the previous videos, we said we want to use this plugin that allows us to use that route function in our view application. So this should work the same way. I'm gonna create another user here. So let's go back to register. So I want to register with new information here, same password. And after a second, we are back to the homepage. And if we check our database, we now have two users. So this route helper function can be used anywhere in our view components, whether it's in the template or in the script tag, since we said this is a plugin. All right, so in the next video, we want to make this into a component, which is actually part of Vue.js, but it's a good reminder how to do this.